Hey everyone. Hey, I just put together this little study. It's called Sports in the Bible, and I want to share it with you. Hope it'll be encouraging and edifying to you. And uh, yeah, that's right. Actually, the Bible does talk about sports. And uh, I know you all are probably familiar with these verses, but I'm going to share them with you. And really what it is, is um, it's, a, and it's, it's an exhortation to be a living sacrifice as a Christian. You know, what we see in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. So, like I said, guys, an exhortation to be a living sacrifice, and as the scripture tells us, you know, because of God's mercy towards us, because you know what Christ has done for us, um, we are called now to be living sacrifices for him, to live our lives to glorify him, and that's really what this is about. But, you know, we have these verses in scripture where Paul and possibly another writer, where they actually compare the, the Christian walk, the Christian lifestyle to that of an athlete. Guys, you know how these athletes, and apparently even way back 2,000 years ago, but these athletes, you know, they have such drive and they have this one goal. They put everything into obtaining this, this one prize. And Paul uses that to, to tell us that's how we are to um, live the Christian life. So let's look at some of the scriptures. We'll start in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 and 25, where Paul says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run so that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So guys, you see what, what Paul says right here? He says, He's first of all, he's comparing the, the Christian lifestyle to a race. And he says, all the runners run, but only one receives the prize. Now, it's not that we're supposed to be really in competition with one another. But guys, I think like what he's saying is you should do everything you can, you know, to live your life to serve God. You know, only one receives the prize. So run that race like you want to win it but so that you may obtain it. And he says, these athletes, they exercise self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. Guys, we know that the wreath or the crown, the prize that we're going to obtain up in heaven, we know that's imperishable. It can never be taken away. You know, the crown, we'll see later, the crown of righteousness, you know, that's being given to us. Um, so, guys, again, look at what, the, you know, we just look at what the scripture says and we can go right back up to verse 23, right before that, and we see the why. Paul says, I do it all for the sake of the gospel. That's it right there, guys. All for the sake of the gospel. So, I mean, again, think about that. We have these athletes. You know, they put all this time and this training and the practice and the nutrition and even today studying the film. They put all this time and effort into what? Trying to win a game or trying to win a race, trying to win a competition. And Paul says, that, hey, that's the mindset we as Christians need to, have, need to have as far as our service to God, as far as you know, getting out there to share the gospel. And guys, you can even think about these Olympic athletes. And they spend all this time and all this training and everything to compete in a few events, and they do it for four years. They train for four years to go to compete in a few different events. So guys, do we, as Christians, do we take the spiritual battle that seriously? Do we put that much time and that much effort into try to serve God and glorify Him and try to get the gospel out there? Because guys, we know in the scripture it says what the gospel is of first importance. It's the most important thing. So guys, are we putting that much time and effort into it? Now let's look over um, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. Paul says, An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. And I think that's pretty simple there. You know, he's just saying, hey, if we want to be a faithful witness, you know, we have to be obedient to the Word of God. We have to practice what we preach. I mean, guys, we, I mean, like I said, that's a simple concept. You know, 
we already know as Christians, there's that, you know, a lot of people want to call us hypocrites and they want to try to use, um, use reasons to justify their sin. They want to try to use all these things to, um, you know, to, like I said, to live that sinful lifestyle. So we as Christians, we need to practice what we preach. And if we don't, I mean, guys, we, we're going to lose our witness. We could lose our ministry if, you know, if it's something really bad. And again, go back to, let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 26 through 27. Paul says, I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body. I keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. And he uses that word disqualified as if, you know, you're being disqualified from a race or an event. Well, look what he's saying there. Guys, again, we have to practice what we preach. And he's not saying, you know, Paul's not saying here um, you can lose your salvation. You know, some people try to use that to make that point. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, guys, if I don't practice what I preach, if I don't do what I'm telling others to do, then I'm going to lose my witness. Who's going to listen to me? That's what he's saying there. Guys, that's a pretty simple concept. Let's look at Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. Paul says, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Now, the note in my ESV study Bible, it says the goal there could refer to the race in the finish line. The race in the, in the finish line. So Paul's saying, I got to press on towards the goal or towards the finish line for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So Paul's saying at this point, you know, he hasn't obtained the prize yet. But he's pressing on towards that finish line, guys. So we have to do that no matter no matter what obstacles we have in our way. We have to keep pressing on towards the finish line. Now let's look at over look over at the book of Hebrews. And um, again, I know people debate over who wrote that book. We don't really know. So let's just see what he says. Chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses... Let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who is for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So guys, look, we, again, we see this. Let's run the race with endurance. Run the race that's set before us. And then Paul says, hey, looking to Jesus, yeah, he's the founder and perfecter of our faith. But then it talks about, look, he endured the cross. You know, he endured the shame. And guys, if, if we're Christians, he did that for us. You know, Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, he suffered and died and endured that shame and went to the cross and shed his innocent blood for us. So guys, we need to think about that when things get tough. Because this writer says, hey, let us run with endurance the race that's set before us. I mean, guys, in life, things are going to happen. I mean, they happen to everybody. That's just, you know, that's part of this uh, this sinful, fallen world. And, you know, I try to apply these scriptures to, you know, the ministry I do and to street preaching. But, guys, whatever ministry you're in, you need to apply that to your life. You know, whatever God's called you to do. And I can tell you, you know, it's... What I do is, it's not always easy. I mean, you know, these abortion mills I go out to in Atlanta, mo they open pretty early. And I can tell you, I've never liked getting up early. Never. But, you know, that's when they open. That's when people are coming in. So, you know, I've got to get up early. You know, in the summertime, it's hot out there. Um, in the wintertime, it's cold out there. Sometimes you got to stand out in the rain. I mean, guys, these are... You know, there's a lot of days I'll wake up and I don't want to go out there. But, you know, I have to I have to think about this. Hey, if this is the race God has called me to run, then I have to run it with endurance. You know, you got to deal with, deal with people getting angry, people threatening you. Sometimes you got to deal with the police, even if you haven't done anything wrong. I mean, got, I mean some of y'all probably know I'm, I got to go to court next month um, for being arrested for trying to preach outside an abortion clinic and... I was actually trying to comply with what the police told me to do. A lieutenant, a lieutenant actually told me I could use a certain amplifier. I was using that, got arrested. So guys, that's uh, 
like I said, that's part of part of doing ministry. That's part of trying to serve God. Um, I think in the last six months, I've had my car vandalized twice. Guys, we're all going to have these trials. We're all going to be in um, inconvenience, and we're all going to have to deal with these issues. But no matter what happens, we're called to run the race with endurance. We have to keep going forward. Now, let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. This is where Paul's at the end of his life, and he tells Timothy, he says, For I'm already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all those who love his appearing. So again, guys, we have this language of, you know, he's fought the good fight, he's finished the race, and he says laid up for him is the crown of righteousness. And not only, Paul said, not only for him, but you know what? All those who, um, all those who will love his appearing, all those who are Christians, all those who continue serving, you know, it's that crown of righteousness is laid up there for us. You know, and again, we, we all know it's not because of anything we've done, because it's because of the righteousness of Christ. You know, we know Christ not only paid for our sin, but he's our righteousness. And that crown is laid up for us, guys. And we so we need to continue fighting the good fight. We need to finish the race. And that crown will be laid up for us. So lastly, 1 Timothy 4, 7, and 8. Go back to the first letter to Timothy. And Paul says, train yourself for godliness. He uses that word train there. That's a word, you know, we, we um, associate with athletes. For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way as it holds promise for this present life and also for the life to come. I mean, guys, when these, most of these athletes, they go out and they train and do all this bodily exercise. Well, guess what? That holds promise in this life. What about the next life? Paul says, you know what? This training yourself up for godliness that's for this life and the next life, something eternal. So I just want to try to encourage y'all with these verses, try to tell you, you know, if things are tough, you know, keep running that race, keep enduring, because, you know, the scripture compares this Christian walk to how athletes train and to how they compete, and um, they put everything into it, you know, so we're instructed as Christians to Run the race that is set before us. Whatever God has set before you, that's the race you're to run. Run it with endurance. You know, at the end of your life, you want to be able to say, hey, just like Paul, I finished the race. And guys, we are to seek after the crown of righteousness that is imperishable. You know, all these, these trophies and these medals and these rings, these things these athletes get for, you know, winning championships, those things are all perishable. We are to seek after the crown of righteousness that is imperishable. So guys, you um you see this uh this is a UGA crown. UGA crown. Well guess what? This is perishable. Um everybody knows that because you know what this one is actually made of cardboard. I got it right down the street here at Burger King. But you know what? Even if this crown was made of solid gold, it would still be perishable. All the things of this world, they're all perishable. They're all going to pass away. They're all temporary. Guys, we as Christians, you know, we're supposed to seek after that crown that's imperishable, the, the crown of righteousness. And again, we know if our faith and trust is in Jesus Christ, and then that crown's already laid up for us. So since we know that crown's laid up for us, and we know what Christ has done for us, guys, we know what we're called to do again. We're called to be living sacrifices and to live our lives to, to glorify God and, you know, to try to bring people into his kingdom. So thanks, guys, for listening.